Hi, this is Wendy Lightheart, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at exponents and the order of operations. Now recall that the order of operations says that we first perform all operations within grouping symbols, starting with the innermost. So that includes parentheses and brackets. It also includes any operations above or below a fraction bar. It also includes any operations within absolute value symbols and any operations underneath a radical sign. The next step is to evaluate all exponential expressions. So what that means is if you have any exponents, those need to be performed next. The third step is to do all multiplications and divisions in the order they occur, working left to right. Now notice this doesn't say perform all the multiplications first and then all the divisions, which is a common misconception. You must perform the multiplications and divisions in the order they occur as you work from left to right. Similarly and finally, we do all the additions and subtractions in the order in which they occur, also working left to right. Let's look at an example that has a little bit of everything. Notice that we have parentheses and brackets. We also have an exponent. We have some multiplication and division. And we have some addition and subtraction. So let's go through the order of operations to simplify this expression down to a single number. So notice that we have parentheses and brackets. And so we need to perform the innermost grouping symbols first, so that would be the parentheses on the inside. So the operation inside those parentheses is subtraction. So the first thing we need to do is subtract 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. Notice that everything else stayed the same. I'm just performing one operation at a time. And this is a really good way to write down your steps so that you don't get lost and you don't make mistakes. Now the next step, now that we've performed the innermost parentheses, now we have to go inside the brackets. Now inside the brackets we have addition. We also have multiplication, which is implied by the 2 right next to parentheses. And then we have the exponent of 3. So out of those three operations, the exponent should be performed first. So our next step is to raise negative 2 to the third power. So if you raise negative 2 to the third power, you should get negative 8. So now we have addition and multiplication left to do inside the brackets. And of course, multiplication is done before addition. So the next step is to multiply 2 times negative 8. And 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. That leaves us with only the addition left inside the brackets, so we'll perform that next. 5 plus negative 16 is negative 11. So now everything inside the brackets is complete. We still have the brackets there to denote the multiplication of 4 that's outside the brackets. But otherwise, we're done with all the grouping symbols. So now, if we go to the next step after grouping symbols, we would perform any exponents that are outside the grouping symbols, and there are none. So then we move to multiplication and division in the order in which they occur as we move from left to right. So notice as you read the expression from left to right, we have a division, and then we have a multiplication later. So we need to perform the division first and then the multiplication. So 18 divided by 6 is 3 and 4 times negative 11 is negative 44. Then our last step is addition. So we add 3 plus negative 44 to get negative 41 as our final answer. Now let's talk about exponents a little bit further. Now that we've learned about negative, exp or negative integers, that is, 
Let's see how exponents are applied to negative integers. Now, look at these two expressions. What do you think the difference is between these two expressions? Well, at first glance, you probably notice that one has parentheses and the other one does not, but otherwise they look exactly the same. And you might be thinking, well, they both look like I'm raising negative 2 to the fourth power. Well, not exactly. The parentheses do make a difference here. When you look at the expression that has parentheses, the parentheses is telling you that you need to raise negative 2 to the fourth power. So you're including the negative sign in that exponent. Now when you look at the expression without parentheses, this one is telling you that you're only going to raise the positive 2 to the fourth power, and then you're still going to have a negative sign in front of whatever that result is. So let's look at these in a little more detail, maybe step by step, and hopefully you can understand the difference between these two. So with the first one, remember I said that the parentheses is telling you that you're raising the number negative 2 to the fourth power. So when you raise a number to a positive integer exponent, we could write that as repeated multiplication. So that would look like negative 2 times itself four times. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Now we just learned that when we're multiplying integers together, if we have an even number of negative numbers being multiplied together, the result will be positive. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, if we multiply the absolute values of these together, that would give us 16. And because we have an even number of negative signs, that means we end up with a positive 16. Now let's look at the other expression. One way you could look at this expression that does not have parentheses is to think of it as negative 1 times 2 to the fourth. Now this really means the same thing. We're raising 2 to the fourth power and then we're making it negative. So making a number negative um, can be done by simply multiplying it by negative 1. And if you think of it this way, it might help you to make sure that you perform the operations in the correct order. Because now we see we have an exponent and then we have multiplication. Between those two operations, exponents have to be done first. So we raise a positive 2 to the fourth power. So that means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then we're going to multiply that result times negative 1. Well, here we have five numbers being multiplied together. Only one of them is negative, so that's an odd number of negative numbers multiplied together, which will give us a negative answer. So we end up with negative 16. So notice that we one of us uh, one of these expressions gave us a positive 16 as as a result, and the other one gave us a negative 16. So you have to be really careful to make sure you understand if there's parentheses, it will make a difference oftentimes in the final answer that you obtain when you simplify that expression. Now let's look at an example where we're going to evaluate an expression for a particular value of x. Now we've done some of these in the past, but we haven't done any yet this term that involve negative integers and exponents. So remember the first step for evaluating an expression for a particular value of x the first step is to replace all of those variables with that number. So we're going to replace all the x's with negative 2. Now it's a really good idea to make sure that you include parentheses whenever you're replacing a variable with a number. This will ensure that you are following the correct order of operations. Because notice that the exp original expression says if you follow the order of operations, that you square the x first, then you multiply four times the x, and then you subtract last. So by inserting those parentheses there, we can see that, in fact, we do need to square the negative 2 first. And when we square a negative 2, we get positive 4. 
So I'm going to re replace that negative 2 squared with a positive 4. Notice the subtraction sign that was from the original expression is still there. I have not done the subtraction yet because that must be done last. Now the next thing to do is multiplication. So I multiply 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And now I can perform my subtraction last. Negative 8 minus 4 gives us negative 12. And that's our final answer. So be very careful when you're or simplifying these expressions that you follow the correct order of operations. Make sure that when you're replacing variables with numbers that you include parentheses. And I'm sure you'll do just great. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.